Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, how are you? My name is Angela, and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to do the Mama Applique Glitter Sweatshirt. So this specific design is a bit on the easier side because we are gonna be using Glitter Flake Heat Transfer Vinyl. So I get mine from Stalls. There'll be a link down below if you wanna purchase some, look at different colors. Um, so what makes it easy is because it's Glitter Flake, you can just rip it. Now, if this is your first applique embroidery video, you have no idea what I'm even talking about. <laughs> so, um, this design is gonna be like a varsity font that's thick that's gonna say mama. And in the inside of that, it will be filled with glitter heat transfer vinyl. Now, regular heat transfer vinyl will not work because it's too thin, it has to be glitter. You can also use different fabrics. But for this video, it's going to be glitter. Um, and then it's gonna have like an embroidery, like satin stitch similar to like this that goes all around the border. And then we're just gonna whoosh, rip it off like a wax strip. So, yes. If you do like my sweatshirt, you can purchase this at AngelaJasmina.com. There may also be like pictures under this video where you can just click and shop through YouTube. I also wanna mention that I will be at the Impressions Expo in Long Beach, California on the 19th and 20th. I will not be there Sunday because California is a six hour flight for me and I have children and they have school on Monday. So I need to be back Sunday. So sorry, Friday and Saturday, I will be there. You can come find me at the booth. I'll be at the Milko booth. I'll be walking around. Just come say hi. Don't be scared to say hi. So yeah, just mentioning that. Trying to decide what color to use. I'm gonna go ahead with the black. Well, you can see the camera. The black glitter flake. Um, now I'm gonna say this in the beginning before. I, I'm gonna say it again later, but I'm gonna say it now. You do not embroider with the plastic piece. Don't look at my crusty fingers. This piece comes off before embroidering, okay? Don't embroider with this. Um, so I'm gonna do a gray sweatshirt with black. It's just my colors. I like red, black, white, gray. That's just me, hence what I'm wearing. Uh, and then my <laughs> leggings are gray. I did not go high at all. <laughs> but yeah, mentioning that and Sweatshirts, you can purchase sweatshirts from snsactivewear.com, you do need a wholesale license for them. Alphabroder.com, you do need a wholesale license from them. There's also Sanmar, which need a wholesale license. I believe jiffyshirts.com, you do not. Um, so yeah, just mentioning that. Machines I will be using are the Melco EMT 16X embroidery machines. If you want any more information on those, there's a link down below, or you can contact Todd. His information is always down below as well. I was debating on which sweatshirt. I'm just gonna do the gray one. And hoops. A lot of you guys are asking which size hoop I use for my adult sweatshirts. And this is a, oh wow. Eight, focus, focus, not on my eyes. Eight by 13 Mighty Hoop. Um, so they work great. You can get free shipping on them if you use code KIDSCUSTOM at checkout. There's also a link to these in the description. I forgot, I see my heat press, I need to turn it on because at the end I need to heat press this because it is glitter flake. So let me go turn that on real quick. All right, so this is my stabilizer. This is from Madeira. This is their Just Right uh, 15 by 15 inch. This is a backing holder. You can also get this on mightyhoop.com. It holds the stabilizer onto the hoop for you. So to find the center point, my heat press is not on, so I'm eyeballing it this time. But depending on some brands of the sweatshirts, they will have a crease already down the middle, so you already have a center point. But if it doesn't, you would just fold it in half yourself, and then you would heat press this for like three seconds, and then you would have a crease down the middle. And that would make it a lot easier to center. Now my name is Angela, and I'm an eyeballer. <coughs> so I'm an eyeballer. This sweatshirt is just for me. The way I know that it's like straight is, there's like, the bottom of here is a line, so obviously if it's crooked, you can tell, and then there's words up here. So I always make sure the words are straight as well on the backing holder, it helps. 
Watch, I'm gonna take this off. It's gonna be so crooked. Just act like you don't see it. <laughs> Hold on. No, this sweatshirt is already crooked to begin with. Look at this. So it's not me. I'm like looking at it. Sometimes you get sweatshirts that are just not straight. And I guess y'all see it firsthand. This is, this is just a crooked sweatshirt. So this design is gonna look crooked no matter what. So just, just saying. So I want no words. Ooh, this is gonna drive me crazy because it's it's off. off. I don't want no whips and chains and you can you can I'm vanilla baby. Oh, that song is stuck in my head. I need some tape. The other question you guys ask me a lot is what the heck is this? This is just packing tape. And what I use it for is placement. So you're not gonna be able to see it. Oh, you can kind of see it. This is just where I want the design to start. So the top of the design, I don't want to go past here. So this is just helping me position. And how do I know? It's about three inches from the bottom of the neckline is how far most adult shirts start. Um, now, if you got bigger sizes, like a 3X, obviously it's about four, four and a half. It really depends on the design you're doing. Like this design, it's not huge. Um, but the top of the D, it's about four fingers-ish, three and a half fingers. So it's about three and a half inches. It depends on where you want the placement. Now, if it was like just a small font like the U, and you're putting it all the way across, and obviously it can't be, it can't start right here because then it's going to be real tiny. So you would put it down further. Just trying to center it between the armpits. So, sorry, underarms, underarms, not armpits. All right. So I have this done, and then... I have to take out the backing holder, which I've gotten. And then we're gonna go ahead and put it on the machine. So on this machine currently, it's dusty. I need to clean it, do maintenance. But I have white bobbin. I wanna switch it to black bobbin because it just fell. <laughs> I'm going to be, <clears throat> because I'm going to be embroidering black um and then if you use white bobbin sometimes the white will show through the black i don't know if you can even tell on here you could see it a little bit my crusty fingers i don't know if you could catch it but like you can see a little bit of white but because this whole entire design is going to be black all the way across i don't really want the white to show so i'm just going to use black bobbin i normally will use black bobbin if i'm using black thread or a black sweatshirt usually i match the bobbin to the color of the sweatshirt. I only have black and white. They do make like red bobbin and other colors for like everything, but I only use white and black. These are also the magnetic bobbins that I like to use. It helps with uh, consistency. See, look, look at this dust in here. I don't know, oh, my crusty fingers. I don't know if you can even see it. It's lint in here. Well, might as well do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the machine. Make sure it's not tucked in so it won't embroider. Can't even see. Embroider under itself. I've done that. You can go like this so the front can embroider. So make sure that is not tucked in. And then I would center, and then I do a trace. This design is pretty big. Now I guess I should explain pretty quickly what the heck is applique, applica, whatever you wanna, applique, <laughs> whatever you wanna call it. So applique is the process of pretty much, you have an outline stitch, then it'll stop. You have a tap down stitch, it'll stop, and then a final border stitch. Um, so it's just having fabric inside of your embroidery that's pretty much what it is now it won't automatically stop you have to make sure you buy either a design that is an applique design and then in the machine itself you have to make sure you tell it to stop after it does the outline stitch because what the outline stitch is it shows you where to put the fabric the tag down stitch embroiders on top of the fabric that way it doesn't move so exactly where it is and then you'll cut around it normally you cut but because this is a uh, glitter flake i'm just gonna rip so 
technically I don't have to stop after the tack down stitch, but I'll stop just so you guys can see the process. All right, so I'm gonna do a trace. Oh, good job, Angela. So again, I don't want it to go on top of that uh, tape. So it didn't, That's the trace was fine. It went all the way here, over, and it stopped right at the top. So what I use this tape for, let me see if you guys can even see the laser. I don't think you'll be able to. My arm is in the way. I don't know if you guys can see the laser. But with that laser, I see that it's about an inch down from the tape. So going forward, I don't have to trace anymore. I just know to make sure the laser is an inch down from the tape because the tape is never going to change size because I use the same size tape. So right now I'm going to go ahead and push start and it's going to do the placement stitch. So I did do this in white. This design will take me 14 minutes to do. All right, so you can kind of see it. Um, white wasn't really the best choice to put on the gray, but whatever. Um, the piece of glitter flake that I'm gonna put is gonna go all the way across, so I won't be able to miss it because I'm just gonna cut a big piece. All right, this is the correct width that I need. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut a big piece. Another design is about five inches. So I'm cut this, and again, we have to peel this off. This is garbage. And then we just have this. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and place it to cover all the letters. Cool, and then we are just going to push stop. Okay, so normally if this was not glitter flake, you would go ahead and start cutting and trimming all around these letters, all the lines, that's where you would trim and cut, and that's how applique would work. Now, I could technically still do that with this. I don't have to rip it, but I, can, I could cut it if I wanted to, but I'm just going to just keep going to the next step, which is gonna be the outline, which is the satin border stitching. Um, and then after that's done, that's when I'm going to rip it. But normally it stops right now because I'm technically supposed to cut it. If this was any other type of fabric, I would be required to cut. So I'm going to go ahead and start it back. All right, so it is done. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. I'm gonna go ahead and just rip this off. Why did I cut my nails? He said I had a pinky. Oh, 
It wasn't recording. Guys, fail. I wasn't recording, but luckily I had Keenan recording for my TikTok, so I'm gonna just have to use that footage. So I'm gonna finish peeling all these little pieces out. My fingers can't reach. All right. I'm using, and this is a vinyl weeder. You're gonna enjoy doing this a thousand times when this starts selling. You gonna enjoy doing this a thousand times? You gonna sound I'm taking it off the website. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> Not for sale anymore. Take it off the hoop. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and cut the stabilizer on the inside. All right, and then when I cut, I hold the sweatshirt like this with the collar towards me. That way I don't accidentally cut the sweatshirt because if I cut it this way, I can't see where the sweatshirt is and I could accidentally cut it. So as long as I cut with the sweatshirt facing me, shouldn't be any problems. Try not to block you guys, trying. And I just cut as close as possible. These scissors are from Amazon and I just glide the scissors. I feel like I'm totally blocking you guys. It's hard to do this without blocking you guys. I'm sorry. All right, and that's what the back will look like. All right, so here's what it looks like. So at this point, you would heat press it. My heat press didn't heat up fast enough yet. And you would heat press it for about 10 seconds. Um, and then it'd be adhered to the embroidery, to the sweatshirt, I mean. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and heat press this. So ignore me in the video, this is after the fact. Heat press it 320 degrees for 10 seconds. Look how flat it is. Ooh. Love how it came out. So yeah, that was a quick, simple 15 minutes embroidery time for the sweatshirt. The design was from Etsy, so yeah. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. Consider hitting the red subscribe button, and if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down below. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'm gonna try to get this posted today, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! <laughs> I can't eat. Oh, oh. <clears throat> Has anybody seen that on TikTok? <clears throat> the little vocal singing. Oh, let me just stop. <clears throat> Never mind. <laughs>